Hey, what is going on guys? My name is Lucky Buns, and in today's video, I'm going to be showcasing my Road to Legend in Season 8 of Pokemon Go Battle League. Now, as always, if you guys do end up enjoying this video, please make sure to smash that like button down below. It helps me out a ton with the YouTube algorithm, especially because these videos don't really get that much interaction. And if you want to see more Pokemon Go content like this in the future, then I would definitely recommend hitting that subscribe button as well. But with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. At the end of Season 7 of Pokemon Go Battle League, I told myself that I would try much harder during Season 8, because we were only able to hit Veteran during Season 7 despite actually hitting Legend during Season 6. Now of course, I was definitely drawn back from the extra large meta that had taken place during Season 7, so I wasn't feeling the best about making the climb towards Legend, but I knew that I at least wanted to make the push towards Expert during Season 8. So getting to rank 20 slash Ace went fairly well in the beginning of Season 8. We use a team of Talonflame, Swampert, and Alolan Ninetales in the Great League to help me get all the way to around 2200 ELO before the Ultra League shift. So we were actually doing pretty solid, and we even got a few shinies along the way. Now before the Ultra League started, I knew that I was going to have to invest into an extra large Pokemon. This is one of the biggest takeaways that I took from Season 7 of Pokemon Go Battle League, because I was running non-extra large teams, and everyone else basically had at least one extra large Pokemon. While it's not impossible to climb without an extra large Pokemon, I knew that it was going to be much more challenging. So I decided to invest into an extra large Talonflame. This is my first level 50 Pokemon, and based on getting wrecked by it tons of times in Season 7, I knew that this was going to help me out tremendously. Now additionally, on top of building the Talonflame, I also went ahead and built a Shadow Snorlax as a solid safe swap option, and I combined the two of these Pokemon together with Swampert, and this was my Ultra League team. So overall, this team definitely did pretty well and actually helped me get to Veteran during the Ultra League rotation, so very happy about that. Now I'm not the biggest fan of the Master League or the Little Cup rotation, so I decided to actually skip that entire two week period and wait for Great League to come back. So once the Great League came back into rotation, things were actually looking pretty good for us. We kept pushing forward until we got to the 2600s. At this point though, we actually tanked all the way down to the 2200s. We kept getting hit by the same four extra large Pokemon that you constantly see in Great League. Extra large Azumarill, Bastiodon, Metacham, and Sableye. Purified Sableye. So things were just not good. Obviously the extra large meta was hitting me once again and I was just feeling extremely demotivated. I was fairly confident that I wasn't going to be able to do anything in the Great League just given these four extra large Pokemon and the consistent use of them. So at this point I basically just took a break until the Open Ultra League came back into rotation. And I figured, despite not knowing the Open Ultra League meta that well, I'll give this a shot. And thankfully, I actually found a team that worked. The team that I ran during the Open Ultra League rotation was Gengar, Obstagoon, and Talonflame. So once again, the Talonflame investment, it's kind of coming in clutch here. So using my Open Ultra League team from 2400 ELO after we tanked down a ton in the Great League, we climbed all the way to Expert at 2750, getting a 5-0 into Expert was fantastic, and we achieved our season goal. We unlocked the Karina outfit, and at this point, I'm pretty ecstatic. This was definitely all I wanted to achieve during this season. I mean, we got the entire outfit. That was pretty awesome. I already have a pretty cool pose from Season 6, so I'm, I'm feeling pretty happy. Moving forward for the rest of the season, I decided that I really just wanted to have some fun with my battles, and so I built a team that actually played around one of the new Season 8 buffs. Dragon Tail. Now previously in the past, Dragonite would run Dragon Breath on this team, but given the new Season 8 buff, I wanted to try out Dragon Tail, and I'm so glad that I did because Dragon Tail was so amazingly good. So for the rest of the Ultra League Premier Cup rotation, we're going to run Empoleon, Kingdra, and Shadow Dragonite. This was a great team in the past, like I previously mentioned, but the extra large meta definitely made it a lot more difficult to run. But with the Dragon Tail buff, this definitely gave it a lot more viability. So with the combination of potential Octazooka debuffs from Kingdra, and more power from Dragonite with Dragon Tail, I soon realized that this team could be exactly what I need to actually make the push for Legend. Now with that being said though, I did manage my expectations here. Like I previously said, Expert was my Season 8 goal for Go Battle League, and if I didn't make it to Legend, it was going to be okay. 
but with this team, I definitely had a shot. So continuing forward using this team, we managed to climb all the way to the high 2800s, and we were now actually within range to hit Legend. Now we did actually bounce around quite a bit in the 2900 range, so I'm not gonna showcase every single one of the battles, but rather, I'm just gonna go through some of my favorites. Let's get things started here. So first off, we're gonna have a Swampert lead. Not the best lead, so we're gonna immediately safe swap into the Kingdra right there. They swap into a Shadow Machamp. We're gonna go for that Octazooka debuff. Can we get it though? Yes, we do. So fantastic, Octazooka debuff comes through for us. At this point though, don't really need to shield. We got the debuff. They actually went for a rock slide though. A little bit uncommon, a little bit uncommon. We still have two shields though, so at this point I am going to come back in with the Empoleon. We of course have to shield this. It's definitely a cross shop and that would have done a ton of damage even with the debuff. They come back in with the Swampert. At this point, uh, we both have burned down one of our shields. This is okay though, we can definitely still make this work. Immediately swap into the Shadow Dragonite, just gonna power through this Swampert. We don't have to shield this right now, we should be okay. Swampert doesn't do that much damage against uh, Dragonite, even in the Shadow form. Their last Pokemon is Typhlosion. So, with one shield, I know that I can just power through this matchup. And that's exactly what we did. The reason I wanted to showcase that first battle is because it demonstrates how powerful Shadow Dragonite is with that Dragon Tail buff. If you have one shield, you can honestly sweep through an opponent's back line, and that's exactly what we did. So in this match, we're gonna have a Galvantula lead an extra large Galvantula, immediately got a safe swap into the Kingdra, and Polion and Dragonite are gonna take super effective damage, so we really gotta try and take this thing out. We tank out the Lund, our attack is debuffed, they swap into the Umbreon, now is a good time to actually throw the Octazooka. We get the debuff, so that's really good, two stage debuff, good good. We can now tank out one of their hits without having to really worry about going down. Okay, so foul play, no problem. Let's go for another Octazooka. And can you imagine if we actually get another debuff here? That'd be crazy. And we actually do. So a four stage debuff on Umbreon currently. This is fantastic. And at this point, it gives us a lot of options. So we're gonna come back in with Shadow Dragonite now. And with a four stage debuff, Umbreon really can't hurt us that bad. So I'm feeling okay. We're just gonna use this opportunity to get a decent amount of energy. Once again, they're throwing another move with a 4 stage debuff. I would have swapped if I was them, but for whatever reason, they just thought it was a good idea to let Umbreon go down. And they come back in with Galvantula. So of course, we immediately throw the Dragon Claw, they get the Volt Switch through. We go for a second Dragon Claw, they get another Volt Switch through. So that was really, really sneaky, unfortunately. We swap into the Empoleon. Of course, we got to shield this. I'm thinking it's a Discharge, but it actually ends up being a Cross Poison. So they were running Lunge and Cross Poison. Super bizarre. Their last Pokemon is a Politoed, so this is a triple extra large team right here. Not the best, but we do know that Dragonite can take down Politoed, and they just showed that they have Earthquake, so we don't have to worry about Blizzard. That's good. And unfortunately, we could not get to that Dragon Claw in time. Gotta shield the Weather Ball. And I'm thinking we can just farm this down. Their Galvantula has a decent amount of health, but if we can make it to the Outrage here, which we just did, we should be okay. And thankfully, we get to the Outrage in time before they throw a move. I'm not sure if they had enough for a move, but that Outrage was crucial to actually winning that matchup. So next matchup, we're going to have an Alolan Muck lead. We'll see what they do here. And Polion does actually take that matchup. They swap into Shadow Machamp immediately, so we're going to swap into Kingdra. Got to shield the Cross Chop, though. Going to do a lot of damage. All right, now we can go for the Octazooka. And we'll see how they play this out. We'll see if we even get the debuff. So we do actually get the debuff right there, that is fantastic. At this point I don't need to shield another cross chop, we should be alright. They throw Rock Slide though, interestingly enough, uh, but we are able to farm down on the Machamp with the Kingdra. If we didn't get the debuff there, they would have definitely won against the Kingdra, but thankfully we did. So they come back in with the Lolan Muck, we come back in with Empoleon, then they immediately swap into Swampert. At this point, we can line things up uh, with Shadow Dragonite here against the Swampert. I'm not too worried about this matchup. They're already out of shields, and we have one shield, so things are looking good. With Empoleon and some energy, we can definitely get through this matchup. So we're just going to throw the Dragon Claw on Dragonite here, get rid of the Swampert. They come back in with a fully healed Alolan Muck. We could have gone for the Outrage, but quite honestly, I felt confident with Empoleon. Got to make a call. We decide not to shield, ends up being an acid spray, and at that point, they concede the match. This match is going to be up against a Season 8 Legend who has a Swampert lead, so we're going to immediately safe swap into the Kingdra, and they swap into Shadow Machamp. Okay, this should be fine. 
Unfortunately though, they do get to a cross chop first, so we're gonna have to shield this, then we can throw our Octazooka. Let's see if we can potentially get this debuff. Yes, so fantastic, we got the debuff right there, so we don't have to shield their second cross chop, and then we can most likely farm them down. All right, so cross chop going through, we're okay. Now, unexpectedly, they actually got to a third cross chop before they fainted. That usually doesn't happen. So that Machamp must have really good IVs. So Machamp is down. They come back in with Swampert. We immediately swap into Dragonite. Then they swap into Alolan Muck. This is still a decent matchup. We still have Kingdra with energy gain on a potential Octazooka or an Outrage. So let's see if we can actually do anything. We don't have any shields though, so Dragonite's gonna go down. They still have one shield. We come in with Empoleon. We farm down on Alolan Muck. That's good, that's good. We immediately throw the Hydro Cannon as soon as we get to it. Last shield is gone now, and we still have the Kingdra with the potential Octazooka or Outrage. So they throw the Earthquake. So we come in with Kingdra and throw the Outrage. It's really, really close, but thankfully we managed to Dragon Breath them down. So honestly, really, really close matchup. Again, having to double shield in that situation was not ideal. It would have been a lot more comfortable if we didn't have to double shield. But because we did, I mean, Kingdra was worth it in the end, but it definitely came down to some pretty good plays. Moving on over to the following day, let's take a look at our next match here, which is going to be up against a Galarian Stunfisk. So we have the advantage right here, and they also lagged a little bit in the beginning, which is pretty good for our benefit, of course. Uh, unintentional, but we'll take what we can get. So after that, we immediately safe swap into the Kingdra. I'm not too worried about what they throw at this point. We're just going to try and farm down. So Frenzy Plant does do a decent amount of damage, but that's okay. Two shield does a lot better than anything else right now. All right, we'll see what they come back in with. All right, so Galarian Stunfisk is back in the game here. Octazooka going through. They don't shield, and we get the debuff. Fantastic. At this point, Kingdra has done its job. I'm not really worried about it going down. Rock Slide doesn't actually kill it though, so we continue to farm down. And uh, at this point, we are pretty close to Octazooka, but I figured there's no point. We're pretty much gonna die. We come up with Empoleon, they swap in with Shadow Machamp, then we swap in with Shadow Dragonite. A lot just happened there, but essentially the key move here is just to farm down. And that is exactly what Shadow Dragonite's specialty is. So we're just gonna go for an undercharge right there, get one more hit, and at that point they concede the match. Despite having two shields for their Galarian Stunfisk at the end there, we still had the advantage with both Dragonite and Empoleon. Going up against a Season 8 Legend once again who is running Swampert. Alright, very original. So we're not going to swap into Kingdra immediately here, we're actually going to try to catch their potential Earthquake on Kingdra. And we'll see if they actually throw Earthquake. Yes they do, alright, so their energy is now gone on Swampert, that is good for us. They come back in with the extra large Skarmory here, we're going to go for the Octazooka. It is like really important that we get this through though. Unfortunately, we don't get it through. So that's really bad, their Skarmory just got a crap ton of energy. <laughs> and uh, Empoleon does resist the flying type moves, but... There is definitely a Brave Bird coming, I can feel it. So I go ahead and I shield the second one, ends up being a Brave Bird, really happy I just stuck with my gut feeling right there, cause you know, that would have been really bad. Brave Bird would have hit Empoleon hard. And they actually come back in with Galvantula, man. Like that is the worst Pokemon I could have seen right there. Of course we have a ton of energy gain on Empoleon. We go ahead and throw the Hydro Cannon, then a Drill Peck, catch the Volt Switch on Dragonite. And I'm thinking, either a discharge or a lunge, either way we got a shield, ends up being a lunge though, so props to them, that was the better play, because now our attack is debuffed on Dragonite, going up against the Swampert, their last shield is down, but Dragon Tail is not going to do nearly as much damage. So we got to think about how we're going to play this out, because their Galvantula has a lot of health. So I actually decided to let Dragonite go down here, and use his opportunity to farm up energy on Empoleon. We're one hit away from the Drill Pack, we get it? We throw the drill pack, and I'm hoping this is going to be enough, man. Boom. Right there. GG. That was one of the most difficult plays I have ever gone through. I mean, we didn't get the debuff with the Octazooka, so that was really bad. And the Galvantula, man, against both Empoleon and Dragonite. Oh, dude, you gotta be kidding me. You gotta be kidding me. So after that set, we made it to 2960, um, but we continued to bounce around for a bit. You know, just got three twos, two threes every now and then, and uh, we ended up going down to 2942. And at this point, for whatever reason, I just decided to not record my battles. I figured I wasn't gonna hit Legend on a 5-0. This was most likely not gonna happen in the 2900s. And of course, 
That is exactly what had happened when I didn't record my battles. So we ended up getting a 5-0 sweep, super crazy finish against a Galvantula with Dragonite, so another crazy matchup. And we made the climb all the way to 3,010 rating, achieving legend for the second time ever. I was so happy, guys. Like, honestly, I was extremely happy. I cannot explain how happy I was to hit legend once again. Especially because we didn't even get to expert during season 7. Like, making it to legend this season really just showed me that I do have the capability of doing it. And I truly believe that one of the best parts about it is that my season goal was not even to hit Legend, it was to hit Expert. And moving forward for the rest of the matches, we were just playing for fun. Of course, once I got to the end, I was definitely trying like really hard, but I was okay not hitting Legend. I was totally fine not hitting Legend. But at the end of the day, man, we made the climb, we got it done, and we did it with a team that didn't have any extra large Pokemon against a bunch of teams that had two to three extra large Pokemon, so... Yeah, I was really, really happy about that. Like I previously mentioned at the beginning of the video, it is not impossible to reach Legend without using extra large Pokemon, but it is extremely difficult against a meta that features mostly extra large Pokemon, especially once you get up in the ratings. Like, you guys saw the matches. There was at least an extra large Pokemon in every single one of those. Don't get me wrong though, those battles were extremely intense, and it really came down to my focus being on point every single time I was going through them. Now with that being said, we managed to hit Legend in Season 8 of Pokemon Go Battle League, but I didn't record my battles on my way to Legend, at least not the final set. So I figured, as a bonus, I would showcase a few extra battles here on my way to getting Pikachu Libre. Karina's Legend pose and outfit honestly looks so awesome, I'm so happy that we hit Legend. Alright, so we're gonna have a Roserade lead here, we're just gonna get a little bit of energy on Empoleon, and we're gonna try to catch their charge move on Kingdra. I figured that they might go for a Weather Ball, but looks like they're gonna go for a Grass Knot right now. Yeah, so Grass Knot right there. Either way, that's honestly fine on Kingdra. They come in with a Shadow Swampert, so... We'll see if we can get the debuff here, that would be really, really helpful. Unfortunately, we don't, so that's not too good for us. We just let Kingdra go down right there, and now we're going to come back in with Empoleon. So I go for that Drill Peck immediately, I figured they might shield if they have energy gain. Yes, alright, so they shielded right there, I figured they're going to go for an Earthquake. They kind of lag out, and I'm not sure if they would have been able to get to the Earthquake, but when they come back in with the Roserade, we immediately swap into the Dragonite, and they come back in with the Caracosta. Honestly, super uncommon Pokemon to see. Water-type and Rock-type. It takes down Shadow Dragonite, though, and I have two shields, but I gotta be careful about using them. I don't waste it on a Surf, thankfully. Like, I figured Rock-type move or, you know, Water-type move's not gonna do that much damage against Empoleon, and I like to think that was the right choice. Because now against their Roserade, we're pretty safe, guys. We have two shields, Drill Pet goes through, and that is a GG. Next match coming up right now, let's see what we got as lead. We have a Golade. Okay, so not a super common Pokemon to see as often in the Ultra League Premier Cup, especially in this ELO range. So we gotta be careful, we gotta watch out for Close Combat and Leaf Blade. I'd swap into Kingdra there for that exact reason. I figured I could try to catch a move, but unfortunately we don't, so now they just have a bunch of energy on their Golade. But, at least we got the Octazooka through on their Galarian Stunfisk. So we got the debuff, that is good, that is good. Earthquake doing little to no damage, love to see it. We get to the second Octazooka. We'll see if we can get another debuff right now, that'd be fantastic. Yes, so four stage debuff. Oh, we are chilling right now, guys, we are chilling. This is really, really good for us. Alright, so we unfortunately can't farm down. We got pretty close to farming down on their Galarian Stunfisk, but... They threw the Rock Slide, that's alright, we come in with the Empoleon, get one hit through. Figured they'd come back in with Glade, but they actually come back in with S Cavalier, so did not see that coming. We swap with the Shadow Dragonite, and at this point, I mean, we pretty much have to shield. But we can potentially fake him out here, go for an Outrage. I mean, we're going for the Dragon Claw, but I want to make him think that we're going for the Outrage. Doesn't work, so they still have one shield, we still have one shield. I let this one go through, and I'm hoping we can take this down. Yes, yeah, so thankfully we took that down right there, and uh, we're gonna throw the Dragon Claw. We have enough energy for two Dragon Claws, by the way. Empoleon swap comes back in, so we swap in, and now at this point, I just wanna let Empoleon go down. So we take the close combat, and we come back in with that stored energy on Dragonite. We throw that final Dragon Claw, and GG Gallade. So that one was definitely top tier plays in my opinion. I was honestly so happy with that win because we took full advantage of Dragonite's energy. This will be the final match of the video against an expert at 2988. Kind of feel bad for gatekeeping, but they also got the lead advantage with Shadow Machamp there, so we immediately save swap with the Kingdra. They stick it out with Shadow Machamp. We gotta shield the cross chop for sure. 
All right, that's fine. They come back in with the Shadow Snorlax. We're gonna go for an Octazooka, try to get the debuff here potentially. They actually burn off a shield. Like I did not expect them to use up a shield right there, but they did and we got the debuff. So yeah, win-win. We're gonna go for another Octazooka here, potentially get a four stage debuff. How crazy would that be? Pretty crazy considering that they just burned off their second shield. So Empoleon is kind of safe right now, even with a superpower guys, like look at that, does little to no damage. And we have the drill pack against their Shadow Machamp. They're out of shields. GG Shadow Machamp, that was our biggest threat. And Talonflame in the back. Oh yeah, dude, we got one shield. We'll make it to the Hydro Cannon before even having to use the shield. GG Talonflame, goodbye. Shadow Snorlax is left, coming with the Dragonite. They already know this match is over. We shield, of course. Body Slam would have actually hit pretty hard. And it's still gonna hit pretty hard right now, but... Well, it's already over, man. It's already over. So GG right there, that was enough to get us a 3-2 victory. So Pikachu Libre has been achieved, unfortunately for Pikachu Libre. It wasn't a shiny. Despite Pikachu Libre not being a shiny, it's always so nice to get it. It's like the cherry on top of hitting Legend. It's just one of those things that you hold on to because, I don't know, hold that sentimental value. Now that Pikachu Libre has been captured, that is officially going to conclude my Season 8 journey to Legend and Pokemon Go Battle League. For those of you that actually made it this far, I'm also going to give you guys a sneak peek into what I'm actually running in Season 9 currently in Pokemon Go Battle League. So let me just say that the bird is definitely the word. Uh, Pidgeot with Gust... Brave Bird and Feather Dance is honestly phenomenal. Think of Pidgeot as basically another version of Kingdra, except there's no coin flip to get the debuff. It is guaranteed two stage debuff. It is crazy good, guys. It is so freaking good. Once again, thank you all so much for watching my Season 8 journey in Pokemon Go Battle League, and I wish you all the best of luck during Season 9.